Hi guys, Paul Pluta on the Paul Pluta channel. And today guys, I'm doing another paid review. This is for Stephen. Stephen, now, sorry, for Thomas. Thomas, Thomas. Hi Archie. Have been a follower of your channel for the past year. Love your passion, love your honesty. Keep up the great work. Want to keep you... Want you to continue to do what you love full time. I'm sending you 50 US dollars. Thank you <coughs> for reviewing my collection. I'm a 40 year old professional living in California, USA. My affinity to timepieces started five years ago. Uh, please don't use my real name. You can refer to me as Thomas for the purpose of this review. I've attached some pictures of my collection. It consists of nine watches. Shit. Number one, a Bercher, Bercher, vintage moon face chronograph, uh, uses an ETA7750 automatic machine. Okay, number two, Rolex Datejust, Rolex Datejust, I love a good Datejust, Rolex Datejust, stainless steel, 36 mil silver, index dial, 1980s. Number three, Rolex Datejust two tone, 36 mil Roman dial, 1980s. Okay, the first three were given to me as gifts 15 years ago. Probably not something I would buy myself, but they do hold sentimental value and I don't plan on selling them anytime soon. Okay, now this is his core collection. Listen to this, guys. Okay. Chopard Milli Miglay GT XL Chronograph 16 slash 8459 automatic 44 mil stainless steel rubber tire strap love it sapphire crystal this was my first luxury watch I purchased I was a newbie to the watch world didn't really know what to look for not wanting a Rolex at that time Seems like everyone is getting a Rolex and I just wanted something different. Saw the Chopard Mille Migler series online and thought it looked very cool. I happened to be in Hong Kong at the time and I bought it new with a 35% discount at the retailer. Now it's pretty much my beta watch. Okay, so... Um, okay, what do I think of the Mille Migler? I wouldn't fucking buy one! <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be racing to buy one. Myself, but yes, I agree. They are a cool watch. I love that tire strap rubber rubber, but um, Okay, fair enough. Then number two. He's got a Pam 328 Lumina Marina 1953 day automatic 44 mil Steel bracelet bought this used in Hong Kong the following year. I love the dial so simple yet elegant and the loom of the Pam really stands out. Bought a few aftermarket straps. Really looks like a very different watch with each different strap. The only downside it weighs like a brick, especially with the oyster. Sorry, especially with the metal bracelet. Yeah, I I gotta tell you, I'm starting. I want to add a Pam to my collection. I'm gonna add a submersible, and I can't wait to do it. But uh, yep, yep, I kind of I get the Pam. I love the 1950. It's just, it is cool. It's cool. It's cool, okay? Number three. Ah, AP Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore Safari Chronograph ST. Sorry, 26170 ST. Automatic, 42 mil. Stainless steel case. Silver dial. Alligator hornback strap. Also bought this used from a Hong Kong dealer the following year. Really wanted an AP because it's a Holy Trinity member. So more so, I fell with, I fell in love with the octagonal Besnel with the white gold screws. I must say the creamy dial with the white subdials grew on me over time. Simple yet classy. I took it to AP for servicing and polishing. And yes, Arch. It cost me an arm and a leg. I don't know if he's talking about the servicing or the watch, but hey, an AP Royal Oak. I mean, the, the thing about AP is the only fucking model that is worth anything is the Royal Oak. And uh, the offshore, <clears throat> especially popular. Very, very popular indeed there. So um, I, I think he's done okay. I think that's 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 quite okay. His fourth piece, wowzers, he's gone a bit crazy on the AP front there. Quick wristwatch check from Archie. I'm wearing my Patek Philippe. 
It's a grand classic from Patek Philippe. It's my world time, the 5110. Okay, number four, Royal Oak. Autobus Piguet, Royal Oak, offshore forged carbon, 44 mil, 26400 AU, automatic forged carbon case, ceramic bezel, 50 hour, 55 hour power reserve, bought this used from a friend in the US and that's my favorite watch in my collection. It's very sporty looking, which often goes under the radar. Yes, I know it's not stainless steel, has no precious metal in the case. Basically, it's just a very expensive plastic watch. But it's exactly why I love this watch. Only a true watch connoisseur would take, would, would make notice of this piece. Another reason I love this watch is how it wears very comfortably on the wrist. It literally a featherweight and the forged carbon case hides scratches very well. Very interesting. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of carbon, uh, forged carbon, but I've, seen the video they looked really cool when they were making these they they really did look really really cool um the number five we've got a um we've got a a pam 127 fitty special edition of 1950 pieces 19 1950 pieces manual winding 47 mil bought used this watch embedded so much original dna of the italian navy watch oversized 47 mil case with the exaggerated curved sapphire crystal, the signature crown guard, just so damn cool. Don't think I need any other PAMs after acquiring. Yes, I, I tend to agree with that there. I do tend to agree. And then number six, number six, number six, he has got, he's got, so this is three of the original purchase pieces and the six are the ones he's added. Rolex. GMT Master 2 Batman 116710 L, sorry, 116710 BLNR 40 mil. Bought this new from an AD, my most recent acquisition. Got this piece after I've been following your channel. As you say, every man needs a Rolex. Yes, 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 yes. Blue, black, blue, Cerachrome bezel. That's all I need to say about this piece. So, Arch, what do you think of my collection? Any comment would be greatly appreciated. For my next piece, I really want to acquire a Patek Nautilus, either a 5726 annual calendar or a 5990 travel time chrono base on the collection I, ha I have currently. Which one should I seek out, sort out? Sort, should I sort after? Or would you recommend another piece? I am considering selling some of my pieces, but I have never sold before. Where should I start? Which platform should I use? eBay. Sometimes I hear sorry horror stories about people getting scammed. Any input is greatly appreciated. Thanks, Arch. Keep it up, Thomas. Well, thank you so much, Thomas. That's a that's a very very cool um, very cool collection we've got here. Now, okay, so let's have a look. What do I think of the collection? I love it. I love it. I especially like how you've broken it down to the gifted pieces. So you've got nine pieces all up, and uh, three were gifted, and six were your own choosing, which I think that really does tell the story. Out of your own choosing, I mean, there's a few pieces there I wouldn't fucking buy. I wouldn't have bought the Chopard Millie Migler. I wouldn't... Uh, well, that's probably about it. The other things I like, I like the Pam 328. I like the offshore, um, the forged carbon offshore. Um, yes, yeah, no, no, I get it. it. It's cool. It's very cool. Uh, and the Batman, Batman, very, very oh, and the Pam one two seven. Yep, yep, yep. I don't know if I would have gone for the one two seven. A little bit over the top, but hey, you, it, 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 it is your collection there. Um. Um, so what do I think? I like the collection. I like it. It's got substance and you put a lot of effort in there. Um, any comment would be greatly. What do I, what would I say next? Look, I, I would really say to you, if you're looking at a 5726 or a, a 5990, I reckon that's perfect. I don't think, I was going to say a 5980, that's the Patek Nautilus chronograph. I was going to say... Yeah, but you've got enough chronographs. You look at it, you've got the two 
APs, you've got, yeah, I think you've got enough there. I would say, uh, I think you could add so many, you could go for a 5711, that's the classic Patek Nautilus, which is huge weight list. 5726, I think, is a great model, that's the annual calendar. I reckon that's a superb piece. I reckon that sounds superb. The Travel Time, the 5990, that's another superb piece. Whatever, th those are both brilliant recommendations. Um, I think I'd go Nautilus. I, I was going to say you could consider an Aquanaut, but I, I think really Nautilus is your style there. Great collection, lovely, lovely pieces. Um, I, I, I think, no, no, I think, I think a Patek is about right. That's what I would add there. That's definitely the case there. Um, I'm considering selling some of my pieces, but I've now, now look, I got to tell you, Thomas, no, 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 don't, don't sell anything. You will be fucking left with a third and fourth asshole. Thomas, unless you're a real fucking asshole of a person and you do the wheel of dealing, buying and selling, I, 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 I would not do it. I mean, look, Thomas, you've got a beautiful collection. If you have, to, if you're buying the next piece, depends on you selling some other pieces. Don't fucking buy anything. Keep what you've got. But I mean, my advice to you, um, look, I wouldn't use eBay. eBay is a great place to buy. It's great for the buyers. For the sellers, it's rather fucked because if you sell on eBay, you've got fees. They often want you to take PayPal. So then what happens is you sell it and someone pays by PayPal and then all of a sudden what happens? Well, you know, you can get really fucked over very, very easily because they do credit card chargeback. You're not protected on PayPal from credit card chargeback. You were really fucked this day. If you're selling expensive watches, you've got nothing really cheap there. Uh, you're going to sell an AP? Fuck me dead! You don't want to be selling that on with PayPal. You want... I'll tell you a simple rule I use when I'm selling pieces myself, okay? This is, because I'm not really a watch dealer. <coughs> I do sell the odd piece. I do sell the odd piece. But, uh, I mean, that's it, 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 it's, it's my watch box. I love, I love wristwatches. I love them. That's why I've got so many. I love them. I love them. I've got about, I've got eight pieces with possibly ten by the end of the year, okay? Okay? But for me... The answer is this, if you're selling something for say, um, three, four thousand, yeah, I don't mind sending it by FedEx or EMS, that's the Express, actually they don't call it EMS, they call it Express Courier International, that's okay, but I'm not going to fucking post a Rolex, I'm not going to post a Rolex, uh, in, <clears throat> not going to do it, and then some bastard who lives in some fucking third world shithole. I ain't sending it. <clears throat> I ain't sending it. So my advice is this. Anything high-end you sell, like anything over $10,000 or anything over 5000 in Rolex, personal delivery. I want cash or bank transfer, and I personally deliver it. When I sold my World Time, the white gold one, I jumped on aeroplane and hand-delivered it. He gave me cash. When I sold my gold sub... He transferred the money before I met him. Then I gave him the gold sub. It's a simple fucking arrangement. I don't take chances with my fuck off pieces. Now your collection here, I don't see anything there. I'd be taking, I would not sell anything on eBay. eBay is dangerous. I have bought watches on eBay. For the buyer, it's, <clears throat> it's not perfect, but there's certain safety measures in place. But uh, no way in the world would I be selling watches of your caliber on fucking eBay. You could try some of the forums, but you got to meet them in person. Or if you're in America, American sales only, and you fly there. And the way I normally do it is when I'm selling a high-end watch. Say, for example, I sold my Patek World Time. I'd say, right, I want a 10% deposit before I jump on Metal Bird tin can to fly over and see you. And I want you to know I'm going to bring everything. If you don't want to buy the watch, right, your airfare is not fucking refunded. I refunded the proportion of the 10% deposit that wasn't used after taking off taxis, after taking off a little bit of accommodation, after taking off the airfare. So 
I and I refund it when I fucking feel like, not when you just want your money back. No, 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 no. So that's what I try and say to the punter. I want my fully paid up deposit, then I jump on Tin Bird and see the punter. Now, you've got to take precautions. You go to some shithole countries, there's certain countries I won't sell to. South America countries, no, 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 no. Uh, somewhere like maybe, you know, some of the dodgy Asian countries, Indonesia, ooh, be a bit careful there. South Africa, fuck me dead. Don't fucking take chances with your life. Uh, and when you meet someone, you want to be careful. <laughs> You don't want to meet someone, jump in a stranger's car, and then have a gun pointed to your head, do you? You don't want to fucking do that. No, 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 no. You've got to be, take precautions. So my advice to you, Thomas, is why don't you just forget fucking selling anything? You've got some beautiful watches. Nothing's really turdish there. Don't sell anything you got. Keep, because it's, it's a fucking minefield. Believe you me, it is a minefield. So uh, um, I, I personally... I sell things, I sell things where I actually, big expensive things I sell, they give me cash, I give them the watch. They don't want to do that, you can fuck off. Fuck off! That's what I say to my punters. You've got beautiful collection, beautiful pieces. I mean, for a 4000 3000 <coughs> maybe up to $5,000 watch, you think, oh, I'll take a punt. Okay, okay. But on something like a World Time or one of these APs, no, 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 no. You pay deposit, and then, and then you buy a ticket and you hand deliver. And if you don't like the guy you're talking to, you just tell him to fuck off. I've often said that I, I had someone I was dealing with on my World Time. I said, look, to be completely frank with you, I think you're a turd. I don't want to deal with you. Goodbye. It's not available to you, to your class of punter. No, no, no. So that's what you've got to be strong and firm. You, you control the sale. And I've got to tell you something. In life, one of the greatest joys I've ever had in life is telling rich people to go fuck themselves. So, uh, yeah, don't be afraid. The customer is always right. That's fucking bullshit. It's not when you're dealing with me, sunshine. So uh, that's, that's my way of doing things. My way or the highway, fuckers. So uh, tell me what you guys think of that. This is uh, Paul Pruder Channel. Tell me what you fuckers think of that. Do you like my my painting in the corner there? Look at that. That's my painting. Do you like that? That's my uh, my reverso. See you later, fuckers. Hey guys, my name is Paul Pluter. I'm the method actor who plays Archibald Chesterfield the Third, AC Three. Guys. Guys, I need a bit of help. I need a bit of help. I need a bit of help. It's very hard running a YouTube channel relying on Google Ads alone. I'm in a special niche and I speak my mind and I've, I don't have all those Seiko wannabes, all the people who want assurance about their affordable shitters. So I've got to really try hard to bring in the revenue. Guys, if you like my content, if you think I'm a great, great chap to have around, why don't you help me out? There's a number of ways you can help me out. This will keep me full time on YouTube. Look in the description of this video for some ways you can help me. You could sponsor me on Patreon. That allows you to send a small monthly amount to me every month. It can be a dollar, it can be a hundred dollars, whatever you can afford. The next way you can help me is, well guys, I I really need some money to keep things going. Paid reviews. On the Paul Pluter channel, I run paid reviews. For as little as 20 US dollars, I'll give you an opinion of your collection, of what you're looking at, I'll try and answer. There's heaps of other ways you can help me. I do telephone consultancy. For 50 US dollars, I will talk to you on Skype or WhatsApp and answer your horological or personal problems. Any questions, I'll give it a go. I'll give it a go. Now guys, please help us out. Look down below and if you, if you, if you could help us out, I will stay here and make videos full time on YouTube.
Okay?